Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be explaining conic sections and specifically circles and how to graph them and how to find like the center, radius, domain, and range of them. Also, make sure to stay tuned at the end of this video. I'm going to be doing a giveaway, so make sure to stay tuned for that. So let's get right on into the video. So first of all, you have this equation as you see right here. This is basically saying x plus 3 squared plus y squared equals 49, which is obvious. But what this is meaning is that because of this value right here, it is saying that the center, is, so this is negative 3 comma 0. Now I'll tell you why this is. First of all, because of this value right here, it's the opposite, which goes right here, and so that's what the negative 3 is. But you're probably wondering, why do I have a 0 here? So let me show you. Because this is only y squared, this is actually the same as y plus 0 squared. And since so you take the negative of this, negative 0 is just equal to 0. So it's basically just saying that this is also 0. So whenever there's just one value, you're basically saying that this is 0. So for this equation, the center would be at negative 3 comma 0. Now on a graph, it would look like this. Let's say that that's 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. This center would be at negative 3, 0. Now I'm maybe teaching you the radius, the domain and range of this in a second. So next is the radius. Now, as I said, it was right here. That's all we know is the center, which is on this graph right here. Let's just say that that's it for now. Since the radius, it's almost like the square root of the distance. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to take this value, so 49, and you're going to take the square root of it. Now that is going to be like this distance here, 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 which is going to connect and make a circle. That's like a really bad drawing, but you get the point. So this is equal to 7, and so you would actually go out, let's just say that this is 7 up here, 7 over here, 7 over here, 7 over here, and 7 over here. Then you would actually connect it. So now you actually can get a circle just by looking at this graph. So if this is your circle, how do you find the domain and range? Well, it's just like a normal line. Because since this is obviously not a function, you're basically just taking it from this point to this point. So in this case, since it goes, well, this is what you have to do. You have to take negative 3, comma 0, and you have to go because of the square root of this, of 49, equals 7. You have to go 7, should, this is the 7 plus negative 3, comma 0. That would be your first point. Then 7 minus negative 3, comma 0. So when you do this, you get for the first one, negative 7, well, it would be 7 plus negative 3, which is 4 and comma 0 because we're doing the domain which is just the x value right here. Then you do the other one, so you do 7 minus negative 3 which is negative 10 comma 0 which is basically this point right here and this point right here. So when you would write the domain, since we're not talking about y values, you would only do the 4 to negative 10 in brackets negative 10 comma 4 in brackets. That would be the domain of this problem. Now we have the range. So the range is just from this point to this point. But since we're at 0, all you have to do is add 7. So your point will be negative 3 comma 0 plus 7 and negative 3 comma 0 minus 7. This would just be in parentheses negative 7 because 0 minus 7 to 7. So that would be your domain and range. So for this equation, right here would be the answer. So basically, also don't be confused, this is lowercase r, which means radius, and this is uppercase r, which means range, just so that you know. So for this equation, this would be your answer. Okay, so here's another example. This one is just x squared plus y squared equals 1. This is actually a very simple one, but let me show you how you do it. First of all, in the last video, I showed you that if it's just one term, it just means it's equal to 0. 
So already we know that our center is equal to 0, 0, which is already one answer. Next, we have our radius. Our radius, remember, is just the square root of this value, which is just 1. So our radius would just be 1. Next, we have our domain. Our domain is 1 plus each of the x values of the center. So that would be, in brackets, negative 1 because 0 minus 1, and then 1 because 0 plus 1. Then we have our capital R, which is range, which is the same thing as the domain because they're both 0. So negative 1, 1. So that is our first example. Next example, we have x minus 5 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 8. So we already know that this up here is just 5. So the center is actually very easy. It's just these values, so 5 and then negative 1. The radius is equal, and you could actually see this is not a very good square. So you would actually not reduce it. You would just leave it as square root of 8, which is a lot easier to draw than a decimal. Or a, the domain, and since I cannot really do this, I would just do the decimal for the domain, and I have this written down. It is 2.17 comma 7.82. The range, with the capital R, and I did not fix this up here, but it's supposed to be a lowercase, is, and I have this written down again, negative 3.82 comma 1.82. So that is our second example. Now, we have this right here. And as you can see this time, we actually have a different set of numbers. We have squares, and we have just like normal x and y's. So let me show you how to do this. You're actually going to have to complete the square. So over here, we're going to have x squared plus 6x plus, and we're going to have a blank here. So let's do this one first. You would have to divide this number right here by 2 and square it. So we have 3 squared, which equals 9. So we're going to write down 9 in the center. And as you know, we're going to have to add 9 to the other side. So we just have to remember that we have to add 9 on that side. The next part, and by the way, this is a plus, and then this value down here, there's going to be y squared plus 4y, because I'm just rearranging these values up here. But after this, you're going to do this, and then divide that by 2, this number right here, by 2 and square it, which is 4. And this is all equal to, and I'm going to move this number over to the other side, and this is equal to negative 4. And remember, we have to add 4 and then add 9 after we're done. So after you factor down the squares, you get x plus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals, and if you take negative 4 plus 4 plus 9, these just cancel and you're left with 9. So now we have it in the form that we want. And I already showed you how to get the domain and the range and the center from these numbers right here. So I'm just going to like, you have to get the domain, range, radius, and center. So you can do that on your own, but I'm going to go on to the next part, which is going to be graphing some of these. Okay, so as you can see here, they want us to graph this. And you're actually going to notice that this is a less than or greater than sign instead of an equal to, which is going to make this a little bit more difficult. So first of all, let's get our graph. And we already know that our center is going to be at 0, 0 because these are just single numbers. So we could just put a little dot right there. Next, we're going to know that this right here is just the square root of that, which is 2. Which means we're going to go 1, 2, put a dot. 1, 2, put a dot. 1, 2, put a dot. 1, 2, and put a dot. Now this is the radius of our circles. Now we can just connect all these, just like this. And that's a very bad circle, but that's what I have to do right now. Now, you're also noticing that since this is a less than or greater than, you're going to have to shade it in. So what you need to do to see if it was true, you're going to plug in a number that is around, like, right here. So let's just do, like, 1. If you plug in 1, you get 1 squared plus 1 squared is less than or equal to 4. Since this is true, it means you're going to be shading the inside of it. If it was false, you would shade the outside, like all the way around here. 
but since it's true, you're going to shade all of this inside of here. So that is our first thing. Now here you're going to notice it looks just like the one before, but this one is different. It has a different thing right here, and this is different right here. So this is a huge part of what's going to happen to our graph. So we already know our center's at 0, 0, and we're just going to go 1, 1, 1, 1, because the square root of 1 is just 1. We're going to connect all these, but here's the thing. That is incorrect already. Because it is not equal to, it will be a dashed circle like this. And now we also have to shade it. And we already know that if you plug in, like, let's say, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared is less than 1, which is true. So we're going to shade the inside of this thing. But the key part is making sure that this is a dotted graph. Now, that is going to be it for this video. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment on this video if you want to see more of this. And also, about the giveaway, I'm going to be giving away five invites to Gab. So make sure to comment on this video and subscribe and like the video to be entered. And the thing about Gab is that you actually have to wait about a week in order to get in. If you win, then you actually get able to get invited instantly and get in instantly. It's just a lot better than having to wait. Also, if you want to follow me on Gab, I'm at Caleb Landon. And make sure to subscribe for other like political videos and more math videos.